My name is Manistead. I am currently um, an assistant professor at Pacific University in Forest Grove, Oregon. And my specialty is in the area of aging and dementia. Um, I really have a profound passion for working with older people. So that's something I'm very lucky to have found. So we're going to be covering a really broad, broad range of topics today. Everything from what normal healthy aging and Alzheimer's, how they look differently because that can be a fine line for a lot of people. Also how behavior management can work in Alzheimer's. Um, we're going to learn how to do some effective communication strategies with people with dementia and determine how to maximize communicative effectiveness. We're also going to talk a little bit about how to interact with the families because so often SLPs are really the guardians of the family and we don't always get as much patient contact as we'd like for treatment. <clears throat> so the reason I'm so impassioned about Alzheimer's is because of my grandmother, Betty. Um, when I was in college, my grandmother was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease and she was evidently kind of far along by the time we had her formally diagnosed. She had been um, a single mother of five children. She had always worked two jobs and the worst thing my grandmother ever did was have a beer with dinner, I'm pretty sure. Very religious, conservative, lovely woman and I watched Alzheimer's change everything about her over a series of years and the last time I spoke with my grandmother she thought I was my mother and when I told her that I was Amanda she looked at my mother and then looked at me and looked back at my mother and asked her where the baby was. So my grandmother had lost all perspective of who I really was as a grown adult child. I only existed to her as a baby. And this was in the middle of my SLP training and it really struck me that my family could really benefit from the things I had learned, that the struggles my family would go through the next several years as my grandmother's memory and language and communication declined didn't have to be that way for everybody. And that I really felt like as an SLP, we are the best people to help families and clients really navigate this really difficult road of decline. But it doesn't have to be difficult and it can still be so full of joy. So that's my grandmother and she's really my inspiration. So we're going to do a little bit of background to start. So why aging is important, the need for SLPs to really get into this field because we're getting in kind of late and what the pathology really looks like. So understanding what Alzheimer's and dementia is is sort of integral to learning how to treat and how to manage behavior. So the need. Um, this is a really impactful picture for me. The United States and some other Western countries are notably blessed with the ability to grow old, which is a blessing and a curse in many ways. Because we have an aging population, all of these disorders that we're really talking about being disorders of aging, largely incidents of stroke, dementia, and Alzheimer's, even Parkinson's, things that occur later in life, are going to happen more and more frequently. It's no secret that the baby boomers are coming to sort of reshape the way that we do treatment as SLPs. Populations are going to change, and with that, we're going to see a lot more cases of dementia and Alzheimer's disease, just notably because it is a disease of aging. This also, I feel like, is pretty self-explanatory and pretty frightening, to be honest. Um, around 2000, we had about 4 million people diagnosed with Alzheimer's. And around 2010, we had about 5.8. As you can see by 2050, not actually that long from now, will have 14.1 million people projected to have Alzheimer's disease. And Alzheimer's disease is only about two thirds of what all the dementia processes really have. So we're looking at a lot, a lot of people. And SLPs largely have not been part of their primary caretaking and part of the intervention strategies until largely swallowing 
gets in the picture. And if we want to keep these people in their homes one more year, keep them in least restrictive environments, it's really important that we get in early and we help provide strategies and support. Otherwise, 14.1 million people is going to be an enormous, enormous problem for our healthcare system.